Hi everybody and welcome to the back office. You can see it's a little bit of a mess and uh, indeed it's quite early morning. I'm actually still in the dressing gown. And I thought I would share with you today a package of component that is absolutely awful. I find it the worst thing in the world and uh, I think this is a public service video and showing it to you will deter you from using it in your designs. So you're pretty familiar by now with electronics in general and electronic ICs and I have some here. I'll just fish one out for you and this is kind of common. You're more likely to see something like this in things you deal with and you just solder them down there. Basically, um, I believe this is a SOIC, um, but it's a bit like a dip package, but a surface mount. You've got leads on either side. You just put it on the board and you've got a variety of ways of actually just bonding it to the board. Great, that's fine. And then that allows you to build things. And then if you remember before we built this a while back, the screen is off it because I've been trying to harvest components <laughs> to get something working. We'll go through that in a moment. Um, and you can see we've got various things there. But among them, you've got uh, an oddity. So you'll see these are regular packages here. Even, even these ones are not too bad. But then you'll see this thing here. And this is called a quad flat package or a QFN. Quad flat no leads and well, no legs. And it is an absolute pain. It is an absolute pain. Now I first came across these, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years ago when I designed them into something and I vowed never to use them again, just on account of how awful they are uh, for prototyping. They are absolutely monstrous to solder down, at least for me. Uh, and I don't know if you have uh, differing views on that, but I have a lot of trouble with them. And I'd like to, uh, go through the process of trying to resolve this. You can see I have a number of boards here. I'm working on a new design and by far this is the most uh, painful design I've ever had to deal with and that again because of that. So the chip in question is a USB controller chip. Gosh I think it's CP2014 and it's this guy right here, not dissimilar to the one used here, which by the way, was absolutely flawless design. So this is a new design that's based on uh, some of that technology and it's using this, it's using the USB serial because it wants to talk to the MCU on board. Nothing too tricky about that. In fact, so uh, simple and uh, regular is this use case that uh, I this hit me for six that frankly it was an issue. Um, and you can see I've actually got now, this is probably the third or fourth board made up. So we've gone through various iterations actually of bringing this board up. So when you make a new PCB, you tend to start um, adding certain isolated systems and then testing them out. Uh, this was the first board and it's clearly missing most of the components because I've been <laughs> removing them to figure out what's going wrong. So you add power supplies first, test the right, test the voltage rails, uh, test the voltage uh, going to the pins that your MCUs and things would go on are correct, but then you start adding more. So normally the first thing I would add beyond that is the USB host controller chip, uh, or in this case USB serial chip, and just make sure that works. If it communicates to the PC, then you're good, because you don't really need to have to connect anything upline. You don't have to connect it beyond that into the CPU to test that. In fact, you don't even need to connect it at all to any of the power domains because it's self-powered from the PC. So what happened was I hooked this all up and then I get that sound when Windows detects a USB device, it goes duh dun And then when you unplug a USB device, it goes duh dun So all I hear is duh dun duh dun <laughs> So I'm like, okay, this chip is clearly uh, not happy. So then I thought maybe there was an issue, so I started removing DC to DC converters, uh, regulators, uh, port expanders, everything that's on this board, and it was still doing it. So we ended up with a, a new board, just hooked a fresh one out again, very minimal, and you can see I already started adding further components on here, but these weren't on it to start with. It was literally just the USB port, the host controller, and um, we'd even bypassed all the protection diodes and all the little little bits you add, you know, to kind of give you some sort of pro pro protection in production. Um, just, it would work, normally it would work fine like that a million times. It's just to stop somebody putting some lightning in the port. Uh, plug that in. Again, didn't, didn't. 
So we decided uh, that it might be the chip. So removed the chip and went through the entire load of six that I'd purchased. And they're not cheap, but we just go through resoldering them, reflowing them. Sometimes it would work a little bit longer. Sometimes it would stay on for 30 seconds. Sometimes it would stay on for a minute. But then every now and then you'd hear that dead and and you'd be dead again. And that, that was with nothing connected. So the third board came out. And uh, again, I went through the whole process and you can see this is way more complete board. And because this one actually got to the point where it was working, working for an hour and a half. An hour and a half allowed me enough time to make sure all the onboard buttons are working, the screen was working, Charlie to check the I squared C peripherals, spy peripherals, and then did and dead. <laughs> Unfortunately, I hadn't put a bootloader on there other than still the serial bootloader. So dead in the water. So absolutely gutted. And then I've gone through and started removing resistors from LEDs and trying to figure out if it's any of this stuff. But it's not. It's not this stuff. And I can tell you why. Because uh, these two resistors here connect the RX and TX to the main of the board. And I just pulled those off uh, as part of the testing. It's not this side. It's not connected to that side. It fails independently. So I've got nothing to lose at this point. I've actually run out of chips because I've harvested the chip off this one to put on this one and now this is dead and now this has died so let's just go through the process of trying to remove one of these just to show you what it looks like I'm going to put a little tiny dab of flux on there we're going to use hot air so excuse the noise and some tweezers and Basically, I think it could be heat related or it could be footprint related. I'm just absolutely not sure at this point. This one actually was hand soldered on and you can hand solder them if you're very patient, but it's not a great job. So I've got, so I've got nothing to lose. I thought let's just take this off, clean it up and fit it back on again, just on the chance that it might work. So there we go, it's off. Now you can see this footprint actually is damaged. And let me turn off that so we can hear ourselves think. So you can see there, actually, this footprint has been damaged. There are a number of pins in this circuit that actually aren't connected to anything. So their pads have come off. So we need to make sure that those pads are not on here because that will obviously affect its placement. And I've got to show you this solder. It's absolutely great. This is some new solder. Look how thin that is. This solder is like angel's hair. It's absolutely brilliant. And I'm not going to lie to you, this is leaded solder because we start giving up on the unleaded for this rework. It was just too painful. And in prototyping, we can't afford the luxury <laughs> of time right now. So we're going to add some braid. And I'm just going to gently move that braid around over those pins. The iron's set quite hot, so you've got to be a bit careful, so don't hang around too long. Now, that looks pretty good. You can see here, though, what looks to be shorts, but not. I'm going to assure you these are not shorts. These uh, pins here actually are connected in the schematic. In, unfortunately, it's not how I would do it, but I was in a rush and I actually forgot to check that. That was a bit of an auto root fail, but that's okay. So now we have the chip here underneath. I'm going to clean that up as well. Again, holding it with the tweezers, I'm really just going to rub over with it. And you can see there's no legs, no legs or leads on it at all. Just these contact areas. And you will notice there's quite a lot of solder in the middle part. That's basically a ground. And I'm just going to try to put a little bit of extra effort in there to get rid of it. Because I don't really want it floating on that. And you don't need it on this. It's normally used for thermal transfer, but on this particular chip, it's totally optional. So again, just going to check those over. I think they look okay to me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm just going to dab a bit of flux on that, so I don't forget. There we go, nicely dabbed. I'm going to take the board. I'm just going to have a look at it. I think it's okay, but I'm just going to add a tiny bit of tin to those pins. I am waiting for a new tip to come, actually. I wish it did arrive. That's fine. So I'm just adding some solder to those. Again, trying not to put too much. 
on that centre pad. Now I'm going to make sure our QFN package is back on the right way round. It needs to go through to that angle. Like that. And you know, to be honest with you, I can already see that that PCB is pretty damaged. I'm I'm not even sure if we haven't lost a pin right there. Yeah, that's looking very sus to me. Anyway, I'm going to solder it on just to show you, but I don't expect this to work at all without a microscope. I think it's time for a new PCB. But it's positioned now lightly. Again, hot air. And the tricky part is just to make sure it's nicely centered. You can see it's starting to bubble. I can see the solder has melted. And that should do it. And you'll know if you've gone wrong or not, because if you go to touch that, it will come off. <laughs> it hasn't melted at all. But let it cool down. And then once it's cooled down, you get your old IPA. And your bit of tissue. And give it a dab. And then just give it a nice clean. Because you don't want any of that flux to stay on there. And hopefully that should work for you. Now I, again, I don't expect this to work, but oh gosh, why not? I'm just gonna go plug it in. Of course, not a peep from the computer. <laughs> I'll have to wait till Monday where a further six more of these chips will be arriving, but suffice to say, I'm going to be designing this out in the next revision of this board because frankly it's not worth it. So my advice to you is uh, avoid at all costs the uh, QFM packages and just go for things like this. As ever, thank you for watching.